evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have the roll, please? Alderman Grady. Here. Alderman Benner. Here. Alderman Nichols. Here. Alderman Taylor. Here. Alderman Sevenick. Here. Alderman Collier. Here. Alderman Kruger. Here. Alderman Zielinski. Here. The first item on this evening's agenda is public comments on any matter of concern to the city. If there's anyone who would, wishes to speak this evening, they could step up to the microphone at this time. Go ahead. Oops, hold on. Let me turn you on here first. There okay. you go. <laughs> go ahead, and okay. if we could get your name and address, please, for the record. Name and address? Yes, please. Dan Paminter, uh, 2725 West Capitol Drive, Appleton. Go ahead. Okay, I have a concern about uh, the way uh, a city ordinance is enforced. <coughs> And this would be in regards to uh, refuse that is tagged and then it, that's in violation from a, a garbage disposal uh, perspective. And it's not the, the ordinance that I have a problem with. I think it's well written, but I think it's interpreted wrongly and uh, inappropriately by the city in their enforcement. Um, the ordinance um, is 8 or 8.3.7 uh, regarding the penalties for uh, items tagged in violation of uh, their uh, refuse pickup, and uh, in the uh, under the penalties uh, under subsection Q, Pren one. It says the Department of Public Works shall place a tag on all refuse placed in violation of the provisions of this chapter. And then going down into uh, sub two, it states at least 48 hours actual notice written or telephonically shall be given to the occupant or property owner prior to city collection and billing. Okay, now um, the way the city enforces it is that they put a tag on the item that's to be picked up that's in violation, and then, um, then they give a citation to the owner of the property and not to the person that is the uh, uh, person that uh, created the violation. And they don't make any attempt to find out who the, who the uh, person that uh, lives in the address is. They just simply send a letter out uh, or not even a letter, they simply send a bill out to the owner of the property. So um, my uh, concern is that it says at least 48 hours uh, actual notice written or telephonically shall be given to the occupant and or property owner prior to the city collections and billing. Okay, um, I have a house in Racine Street that I rent and I had to rent for almost two years and uh, apparently this renter placed a piece of furniture out on the curb and it was uh, uh, tagged and then I was sent a bill for it. And I didn't know anything about it um, until I got the bill, which was uh, about a month later that I got the bill. So then I had to kind of play catch up as to what, what it was and how it happened. And it, it didn't comply with the ordinance that the city had written at all. Um, I spoke to the city attorney and she advised me that the red tag is the written notice. And, uh, you know, that, that is uh, not a very reasonable practice. And apparently the city's been doing that for a long time. And that's for, forever is what I was told. And so if that has been the practice, I think it's inappropriate, uh, unjustified, and simply it's just lazy. That's no way to... Uh, communicate to the owner of the property. 
and certainly doesn't give a 48 hour notice so that he can make any, or she or whoever the property owner is can make any adjustments. Um, and there's no, no effort at all made to find out who the resident was and uh, that uh, the violator that should have been held accountable was not. And they, they pass it on to the, to the homeowner, which is not the proper thing to do as far as I am concerned. And, and like I said, it, it, it uh, explains it in the, in the code, in, the, uh, in writing, and it's, and it's well done. The way it's written, it's appropriate. But it's not appropriate the way it's enforced. And, and then, like I said, in the first sentence, it says uh, that the public works shall place a tag on all refuse placed in violation. And that doesn't say that that's the notice. It's the next paragraph, at the end of the next paragraph, that said that they should be given a 48-hour notice. And so that's not one and the same. The tag is not the same as given notice. Because uh, in my case, and probably many of the other people that have been punished or fined or whatever you want to call this, uh, it's a $50 charge. And uh, um, there, there, there wasn't uh, any kind of uh, consideration to the property owner. So, um, uh, you know, that's, I guess, where I'd like the, the council to um, take a look at that and make an adjustment as to how the city uh, does their practice on finding the people, the, the homeowners, and not go to the people that are responsible for putting it there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parameter. Is there anyone else this evening? No? Sandra DeBill Taylor, 545 Broad Street. Whoops, I'm sorry, Sandy. And I'll just start with the council packet uh, under communicator minutes to receive the plan commission. I was disappointed to read that the plan commission decided to uh, scale back and just meet once a month, um, especially when two of the members were absent. So rather than meeting twice a month, they're going down to once a month. Um, Part of the problem I see with that is notification to the public. The plan commission, the majority of work that they do are re revolve around zoning, site plan review, and things that several of them require public hearings. And in order to have a public hearing, you have to have proper notification as a legal ad in the newspaper. What I'm afraid is going to be happening is something will come up and a special meeting will be called and the public would have to be constantly looking at the website to see if there was a special meeting. Right now, everyone knows it's, it's basically twice a month on the Tuesdays, you know, every two weeks. So I think in the long run, um, I would rather have it the way it was, where you had a meeting and if there was nothing, it was canceled, rather than scrambling to make special meetings. Um, the next thing I had highlighted, um, there was a, uh, just a comment regarding uh, the LP agreement. Uh, It's just basically a comment about Calumet County. To me, it, it seems as if Calumet County just wants to wash their hands and make the municipalities maintain this property. They did the same thing with um, the tornado siren. They didn't want to have provide it, so the city ended up having to take money out of the TIF district to provide tornado siren. Now we're having to maintain uh, the trail. You know, it's just kind of like, I think Calumet County is just, just dropping the ball. Um, under action items, the payroll on page three, uh, there are three separate uh, checks issued for each exceeding $300, so it's roughly $1,000 in total for assessors for hotel accreditation. My question 
basically is, I thought, I mean, we outsource the assessor. That's a, a contract. So are these in-house people or are we paying for the assessor to go to the seminar or accreditation? And then on page five, uh, this invoice appears every month exceeding $2,000 for 316 Racine Street, which I thought was the former uh, location of the health department. I thought the health department moved into this building, so are we still paying rent on the old location on Racine Street? Um, under action items, uh, there's an amendment to the Paint and Restore program that adds with nonprofits. Um, actually, I was surprised that it wasn't added because I kind of brought it up to begin with. Um, in fact, I'm really not in favor of this program because I think it's not grant money that's coming from the state or federal government. It's a tax. It's a tax on all of us to supplement properties that have failed to maintain themselves. Um, and then if it was open to everyone, it'd be one thing, but it's capped at properties less than 115,000, yet it's open to uh, investors and flippers and uh, absentee landlords who might have multiple properties that say $50,000, they have three of them, that exceeds the 115 cap, yet they can have three properties get a grant, yet someone owner-occupied with a single-family home doesn't get a grant. So I've been having a problem with that, but um, I just thought it should either be open to everyone or owner-occupied if they were going to put a cap on it. But I am in favor of uh, the addition of the nonprofit organizations because actually I brought that up before. Um, item number five, the, the property listing for the former city hall. I just want to thank the council for uh, referring that to have an appraisal done because the ballpark, ballpark price was about half of what the appraisal came in as. So, good news there. And then... And you've, you're exceeding your time, so if you could... Okay, then I'll hold my quickly. other comments for after the meeting. <laughs> okay. Anyone else this evening? Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the uh, minutes to receive and the communicate... Whoops, I'm sorry. We skipped one. <laughs> the um, next item is a presentation to the Canine Corp from the Veterans Honor Guard. Dave is here. I'm Dave Mix, Commander of Post 2126 Menasha, and uh, I'm really here to donate some money for the Canine Unit. Uh, I was here probably two months ago and did the same thing. But I have to tell you that this money here, uh, there's a lot of you that, that may have donated to this because what it is, this is the military honor guard that does the funerals in the Fox Valley. Uh, I am the leader, not the commander. We don't have a commander, I'm just a leader. And it's the four organizations, uh, Nina Monash, the two VFWs, and the two legions got together and made one honor guard. What we do is we get donations put back to us. And we don't really uh, divide up and say, here, here's 25, here's this. We just throw it into a kitty. And uh, the kitty has gotten kind of big. So we're decided at our last meeting that we took some money out and we're donating it back to the community. Uh, this is really what the veterans do. Uh, we don't pocket a lot of money, but if we get it in, we use it for good resources. And uh, we did Nina's canine last month. And 
we're doing tonight's canine here, and we did do some other organizations. Now, uh, some of you may not know what this really means to us. It means that we did our deed for the veterans that passed away. Now we're doing our deed for the money that you gave us to donate back to some of the stuff that we need in the Fox Cities here. Uh, a lot of people don't, don't even know that we exist because they probably didn't have a veteran or something that, that had passed away. But the people that do know us tell us, hey, you're doing a good job and we appreciate that and we appreciate the money. But, you know, like I said, we're not there to make money. If we get it, we'll take it. We thank the people. Everybody that sends us money gets a nice thank you card. And then we just put it in a kitty. And tonight's one of the nights that we want to donate some money to the Menasha Canine Unit. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to the minutes and communications. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to receive minutes A through G and communications H through I. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second from Alderman Kruger. Is there any discussion? Alderman Nichols? Thank you, Mayor. Letter A, the Ad Hoc Protocol Committee. Uh, I just wanted to make everyone aware that the Common Council passed a motion on September 18th to form the committee and also recommended that that committee come back with its recommendations within 30 days. And it's now been over 60 days and we're still waiting for a recommendation. Alderman Sevenick. That's not necessarily true. I made the motion, it was my motion, and I never put a 30-day clause in there. Somehow through uh, the process here, 30 days was added because there was a memo suggesting it. I made the motion, there was no 30 days. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item G is the consent agenda. There are four items this evening. The minutes to approve from the Common Council meeting of November 20th, the Board of Public Works recommendations from November 20th for the change order to Pfeiffer Brothers, for the Fox River Loop the Lake Bridge Crossing, it was an ad of 19,500, and a change order from Pfeiffer, to Pfeiffer Brothers Construction on the Fox River Loop the Lake Bridge Crossing for a deduct of $10,000. And the county, county highway LP intergovernmental jurisdictional agreement with the village of Harrison. Do we have any items that anyone would like separated this evening? Alderman Sevnick? Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to separate the county highway LP uh, agreement. Alderman Zielinski? Uh, number two. Okay. Any others? Do we have a motion for items one and three? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you. At, the, at this time, I'd like for us to approve the consent agenda items. One, the Common Council, and three, the change order to Pfeiffer Brothers Construction, a deduct of $10,000. There's a motion and a second from Alderman Kruger. Um, are you ready? Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item two is the change order for the Pfeiffer Brothers construction for an ad of 19,500. Do we have a motion? Oops, I'm not sure who was first now. Okay, I'll, I'll let all up. Oh, okay, Alderman Sevenick? Sure. Um, Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll move for the change order to Pfeiffer Brothers for an ad of 19,500, change order number one. 
Is there a second? There's a motion and a second from Alderman Benner. Is there any discussion? Alderman Zielinski. Uh, thank you. Um, this came through Public Works. Um, we discussed a little bit about this last time. Just uh, I'm not in favor of the increase at this time. I don't think it's very much needed, and I think in the future there might be increases, and I just don't want to deplete that money for something that's more cosmetic than structural. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, could could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 7-1. Item four is the highway LP intergovernmental jurisdictional agreement. Do we have a motion? Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I make a motion to approve the County Highway LP intergovernmental jurisdictional agreement with the Village of Harrison. Is there a second? second. There's a motion and a second from Alderman Collier. Um, discussion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At the last uh, Board of Public Works meeting, I addressed this issue. And of course, uh, after reading the minutes, I realized that I had voted wrong. And I guess I did know that, but I didn't. We had such a long night. That would have been another 15 minutes to reconsider my vote. But everybody knew my position. And I think it's probably the first time I've ever done that. But I wanted to be up front with this council and let them know, you know that I had done that. Um, as you recall, last time I, I stated that, first of all, um, I am not in favor of this because, again, this is sort of like the bridge situation. They hand it over to the city, and now the city has to maintain it and in the future. And I understand that we're getting some pretty good deals out of having this uh, taken care of, especially with some... Um, apron openings and those types of things and that's a good thing but uh, I know that county governments like to do this uh, they like to we'll fix it and now it's yours and that's short term and that's nice and we get a nice road maybe during our lifetime here but that's not fair to future generations that now will have to maintain and, and pay for a new highway that Apparently, we are sharing with another community that I absolutely do not trust when they don't honor their own agreements just because of a technicality. So I'll be voting against this. Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I also echo what Alderman Sevenick said. Um, you know, the, the county has some growing pains, too. And uh, I sat at the corner at 114 and Lake Park. Uh, uh, during the budget meeting, and I would say 85% uh, of the cars came down Lake Park, turned left, and headed towards uh, uh, Sherwood to the east. And uh, with that amount of traffic uh, that's chewing up that road, this isn't a street, city street. This is a, a, a feeder. People get off at 441. They used a the shopping plazas on the end of Lake Park, and um, this isn't our city street is one over where we have our new subdivisions, and this is a county highway, and it should stay under their jurisdiction. It should stay under their dollars, and uh, for that, I'd be voting against this too. Alderman Penner. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The spirit of what. Alderman Sevenich and Alderman Taylor said I agree with. Except when I look at that area out there, that's becoming really an urban environment, and it's not so much a county highway anymore. And when this first came up, I looked at it from a perspective that this is really our border for the city of Menasha. It's also the border for the village of Harrison. And they're developing a lot, we're developing trying to develop more, but it's a bit of a struggle out there. But it's about creating the environment for the people that live here. So whether it be for emergency services to be able to travel on that road, for people to have 
intermodal transportation along that road that live in the city of Menasha. And just for how we're creating an image as one of our gateways into this community, the, how that road looks is important to me and to the city. And for the folks that live out there and the businesses that are there as we're trying to encourage additional business to develop along Lake Park, things like that, I thought it was important that that this section of road be done in a manner that that fits what we're trying to do in the city and for the image that we're trying to project. And so I think it's important that the road get done the way that it is, and this was about the only way it was going to happen. Otherwise, the county would have just resurfaced that and left it as it is, and it really wouldn't have served our taxpayers and our citizens out in that area very well and the people that come into this city. So I am definitely going to be voting for this, although I don't disagree with the, with the mindset of if it's a county road, you know, it would be nice to leave it as is, but as things develop and the city does what does what cities do. We have a tendency of taking ownership in in what we want our city to look like and how we want it to operate and function. So I think this is about as good as what we're going to get to be able to do that. And so I'll be voting in favor of this. Thank you. I'm sorry, Alderman Taylor. We should go next to Alderman Zielinski, and then I'll get you after that. Um, I, I turned you off, though, because I hit the wrong button. Just a, just a question. If this was not the pass tonight, what would be the result? Attorney Captain? I'd... Did you want to? The attorney said we already have an agreement. The problem with the agreement that we have is that it's a three-party agreement with the town of Harrison that no longer exists. And that's why we asked to renegotiate this agreement. And this agreement is actually more favorable to the city because we are only maintaining the portion from um, whatever road that is. What road is that? Okay. Winnipeg Drive to 114 mm -hmm. where the previous agreement was from Manitowoc to 114. So this was basically voted on before. We're just changing hands, basically, with... Yes. All right, thank you. Alderman Taylor. Our growth corridor goes out to Lake Park Road, and that's the final eastern uh, port, uh, end of our border. Uh, some years back, uh, there was a cheese factory at Manitowoc Road and Lake Park, and... Uh, a young high school girl got killed there. Uh, it was right up to the intersection, and there was a vis vision control problem. And at that time, uh, we asked the town of Harrison and Calumet County if they would go in on uh, removing that cheese factory for the vision control problem. And it sat out there for a long time after that. Uh, something else. Uh, Josh, I asked, uh, give you a call and ask who takes care of the lights at Lake Park and 114? Who, that would be either the state or the county. We do not have any uh, maintenance for those lights. Can we pay for that? Uh, we paid a very small portion, roughly 5% of it. Okay, thank you. So, again, uh, uh, I, I feel that uh, our border ends at, the, at this road and not on this road, so I'm voting against this. Alderman Penner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question. I brought this up at our um, Board of Public Works meeting. Uh, do we ever find out why the town of Harrison's attorney never signed this agreement? I do not know if we ever found that out or not, to tell you the truth. The, the old agreement, yes. I didn't write that one down. I wrote some of the other questions down, but I didn't mm. write that one down. Yeah, okay. I asked it, nobody knew, and I thought we were going to get an answer for it when we got back here. Um, apparently, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sure. Any further discussion? Ready? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please?
I, I will vote in favor of this. Sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, I guess I can't, but I will vote in favor of this. If you'd like, I'll... It was 4-4, four, four, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So, I don't know if you want to vote. It, it, you can vote at this one. Do we need to re-vote or not? If you want, if you want your vote to appear. Apparently, we need to re-vote again because it was a 4-4. Four, four. If you want to... If and they want my vote to be recorded within so that, so. So I so. think you can just... Pardon? So, the, the clerk is just... <laughs> requesting that we we vote again so that I can put my vote in there as well. Well, someone votes differently. <laughs> okay. So now you need to announce it. Okay. There's a tie 4-4, four, four, so Mayor, if you'd like to vote. And I would like to vote as well. Okay. Now I can show it. Okay. Now it passes 5-4. Item I is action items. The first item is the accounts payable and payroll for the term of November 22nd through 30th. Is there a motion? Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of 11-22-2017 through 11-30-2017 in the amount of $1,392,399.75. Is there a second? second? There's a motion and a second from Alderman Grady. Okay. What? Oh, Director Jacobs. I, I just wanted to make a uh, um, clarification for um, one of the vouchers that was paid for with the credit card. Um, on the description for the three hotels that um, charges that are charged there that say assessors on there it's actually for three individual assessors that traveled here uh, for the accreditation for the police department so they were actually assessors but they're not the village or I'm, I'm sorry they're not city assessors they're actually assessors that came to do the accreditation for the police department during for three nights for three individuals uh, the dates between November 6th and November 9th thank you Alderman Taylor thank you mr. mayor uh, Page five, combined page 14. Item three, Dumpke and Associates, uh, 316 Racine Street. Are we locked into a con, we moved into this building in June and I'm just wondering if we're, were we in a yearly contract with them or something? Director McKinney, did you want to take that or did you, D Director Jacobs? Pass. So that item is to pay for our lease, which is up um, in December. So we had a, a lease that we um, entered into in 2015. So um, that lease is good through December 31st, 2017. So probably one more payment. And that's that's right. Okay, thank you. Uh, page four, combined page 13. The sixth item down, $433 for a library trash can. And does anybody know what that trash can is at outside, inside? Who was the vendor to again? On the credit card? Six item down. Four hundred thirty three sixty seven cents. This is the credit card bill for the month, so <laughs> <laughs> this isn't for just a library trash can. The the credit card is actually a combined bill for all the party all the department heads that have a credit card. So it all comes in one large bill. Okay. I just reading it, all it says here is uh, library trash can, and I was just wondering if we're buying. John's looking for it. That's what they said. 
I didn't see any hundred dollar hammers though, so that's John, you can get back to us on that one. I can uh, skip. I, I can gladly do. I'm halfway through the bill, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to spend another. <laughs> okay. It's invoice seven three five one. If that helps. Okay, we did find the winner here. Um, it was for a Rubbermaid Ranger 45 gallon two door outdoor trash can, beige in color, uh, $400 plus shipping of $33.67. So $433.67. Okay. You know, we have those ornamental cans that we had for the downtown at the city garage. I wish they would have, uh, and those are very expensive too. I wish they would have taken that in consideration. Okay, uh, just down the about halfway uh, uh, invoice number eight nine eight four wellness luncheon. What is the wellness luncheon? Parker Johns one hundred fifty one dollars sixty eight cents. Those were all salads, right? It would have been it would have been for possibly a lunch and learn. I have to see the exact. Okay. And then down below, there's another $73 at the very end for a wellness luncheon, and that was Jimmy John's too. So I was just for $73.50. So I was just wondering what these two are about. Yep. So that's a lunch and learn again. Um, we have a speaker come in. Could be um, this last one we had was Brent from TNT Fitness. Um, so they come in a half hour, we eat lunch, and then he talks about a topic on wellness. And this is in uh, some budget that this is taken out of? The wellness grant that we get from our insurance company. Okay. Um. On the flip page of that, page three, combined page 12, uh, about halfway down, uh, invoice number three, Three four one four, Jefferson School Lights. Uh, why would the school lights show up on our budget page? That's in the, that's in the um, municipal building. Um, it would be in the municipal building budget, but we'll find the actual invoice.
Director Tungate, are these the lights at the Jefferson Park Pavilion? I'm not sure what the dollar amount was here. Now, I have that coming up near the lamp replacement, Jefferson Park, $1,500. So that's I'm sure that's a different item. This is school, so. That's it. Okay. Oh, what, what's the dollar amount on it? Less. $183. Okay. Brian. Oh, it looks like it's for a parking lot. It's not the parking lot. It's, it is for the Jefferson School parking lot. Um, there was for a floodlight um, that was replaced. 175 watt for $119.99. There was a mount bracket included uh, along with some conduit slip fitters and a photo cell for the $183.96. Why would that school be on our under our budget? Wasn't that was the parking, parking lot. lot? The parking lot itself is in the park, even though both the school and the park use that. I thought those were separate lots. No. No. Okay. Thank you. And then, um, I did had those. I did have those uh, hotel accreditations that Ms. Taylor brought up too. And thanks for answering that. Um, and if you flip that back to page four again, combine thirteen page the last second to the last item eleven hundred dollars for hotel training just what department was that invoice nine eight six eight it was in the police department police department okay thank you and uh, page six Combine page six. Uh, Temper Pedic nine thousand for the mayor. Did you order a mattress for your office? <laughs> this is an office chair that's oh. um, oh. separated. It's not mine. It is for the deputy clerk. So you get a Temper Pedic nine thousand, huh? <laughs> It is a, it's not for me, no. It's because that is separated between the clerk, the mayor, and the attorney's budget. Okay. Just didn't want to make sure it wasn't a mattress. That'd be spending too many times here, too many nights. What is your point of order, Alderman Collier? No need to talk about mattresses. It is um, well received. If we could move forward, Alderman Taylor? Pardon me? The point of order was well received that we oh. shouldn't be talking okay. about mattresses. All right. I'm sorry. It was a little tongue in cheek. Sorry. I'll eliminate the levity up here. Uh, page five, combined five, uh, point set of order $50. It's point set us for the common area of the city hall, the lobby on second floor. Okay. And just. Uh, uh, the Jefferson Park lamp replacement, uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, Manash Utilities. Just wonder how many lamps do we replace? Director Tunney, do you have a understanding of that? That's John may have the invoice that has the specific number on it. I don't think the number was on it, but uh, it was for the uh, South Diamond lamping, relamping of the the lights on the South Diamond. So Jefferson diamond lights. Yep. Right. Okay, and. Uh, Two more items, that's it. Page 11, combined page 20. 
United Sign Corporation uh, invoice number 37714, $3,300 uh, wayfinding sign. And I was just wondering where that sign is placed. There are three of them. Three? There, there are two at the Public Works facility, and there is one. Two at the what? The Public Works facility. Okay. Uh, on Plank Road, and there is one at basic it at Eighth Street, I believe, to replace a old sign. It's at Racine and Eighth. Okay. Those are paid fifty percent through a grant from Convention and Visitors Bureau as well, and those will replace the old Public Works sign at Baldwin. I don't know if it's gone yet. We were out there recently, Josh, but that sign will come down. Okay. And then on the same page, the last item, uh, second to last, uh, Lawson Canal appraisal, $1,600. There's no invoice number, but I was just wondering what that Lawson Canal appraisal was done, what, what that entailed. We were uh, doing some preliminary uh, investigation work on the the value of that property. There was not uh, not an appraisal done. We were just trying to uh, do some investigation on work on that. Okay. And what budget did that come out of? What what page is that on again? I page eleven, combined page twenty. Second to the last, right above We Energies. <coughs> Check, Check number five nine five nine four. Uh, TIF or um, fund four eighty nine is TIF number eleven. TIF number eleven. Okay. Thank you very much. In the future, if you're going to have a long list, it would be helpful to get those to Director Jacobs before the meeting and that way he can look those up and then you can ask those questions. Alderman Collier. I just want to applaud Alderman Taylor on the diligent work he's done and some of the best grandstanding I ever saw. Alderman Collier, that was not called for. Alderman Grotti. <laughs> Oh, I was going to turn. I was echoing your your comments too. That in the future, if we do have questions, to don't blindside. Let people know ahead of time. And, and there's nothing to say that you shouldn't ask them at the meeting, no. but just so that no, he I, has the it's good to ask them. Yes, ahead of time. So, Alderman Taylor, and that's why we should move our meetings to Tuesdays so we have time to get the stuff. We run out of time on the day of. Seeing no further discussion. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item two is the beverage operator's license applications. Is there a motion? Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the beverage operator's license applications for the 2017-2019 licensing period as uh, 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 listed in the memo. Is there a second? second? There's a motion and a second from Alderman Benner. Is there any discussion? Okay, ready? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item number four is a liquor license application for Taco Tap LLC. We've got the amendment to the store. Oops, I'm backwards. No wonder. Okay, we'll move back. Item three is actually the amendment to the paint and restore program. Is there a motion? Alderman Kruger. Maybe. Hold on. <laughs> it's moving around here. There you go. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make the motion to approve the amendment to the paint and restore program. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Collier. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Oops, I'm sorry, Alderman Nichols. Uh, 
Planner, Sh now I'm gonna get confused, Schrader? Is it Schrader or Schroeder? Yeah. Okay, Schrader. Um, could you just explain what number six is? Thank you. I just turned you on and then you turned yourself off. Oh, I'm, I'm new to this, so. <laughs> All right. Um, it's basically, uh, as we kind of started to look at implementing the program, it just came about that um, there may have been a loophole where, uh, where all these funds could have been uh, uh, used by one one specific project, whether that be um, for a nonprofit or a, a non-governmental entity. Um, so we wanted to basically separate those out to ensure that that these funds get spread out um, throughout the city and and available to to others that don't get other funds. Um, so the basic intent of of adding this ineligible um, condition is is to allow that uh, that spread of the wealth um, and to make sure that um, that this program can continue to um, support the redevelopment that it's intended to thank you seeing no further discussion could we have a roll call vote please I'm sorry I didn't see him. You can pause it, which will allow you oh. to... Did it's everybody vote? The Pierce. Yes. Motion carried on roll call 6-2. Okay, now we'll go on to the liquor license application for Takeo Tap LLC. Is there a motion? Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make the motion to approve the liquor license application for Taco Tap LLC, Tony Eichland, agent, doing business as Taco Tap, 10 Tyco Street, for the 2017-2018 licensing year. It's a motion and a second by Alderman Collier. Is there any discussion? It looks like none. Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on, roll call 8-0. Item five is the City of Menasha property listing for 140 Main Street, the former City Hall. Alderman Sevenick. Are we accepting I'm sorry, I didn't see. the appraisal or are we just uh, at this point um, so, moving to make the motion to list the property? So the motion hopefully would be to list the property at X price. Okay. That's why I asked because it's <coughs> not listed that way. And now I... We, we didn't oh, want to put a price in for you. We thought that that should be a council decision. So I can change that even? You can make any price you want from 50 cents all the way up to 10 million if you want. Yep. That's <laughs> probably worth it. Um... I'll make this motion for the sake of discussion at this point uh, that we list the property the city owns at 140 Main Street um, at this point, and I would like to an a offer an amendment to the price. I think that they should be two separate motions. So the motion on the floor is to list the building with Newmark Grubb Pfefferly through October 30th, 2018. Is that? That's, That's who we're using, yes. Okay. There's a motion, Alex, and a second from Alderman Zielinski. And then did you want to I have amend? Discussion. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to discuss. Yeah, can I discuss? Sure. Sure, you can. You can discuss. Um, I kind of want to echo a little of what one of our guests this evening brought up about having an appraiser. I was shocked absolutely shocked that council members up here chose n not to have a, this building appraised. That is an absolute disservice to the taxpayer and I feel very strongly about that. I'm very upset about that because the, the price that was listed so that the people in the audience and the people on TV understand is that they wanted to just list this at 249000 and there were some of us that believe that this building is worth much more. In fact, I think it's even worth more than what the appraisal 
came in, but they're the professionals. And the appraisal came in at $432,000. That's a huge difference. But I've also did a little my own research and looked at properties in the surrounding area and in, the, and in that type of professional building, and they were almost double this price, right within our own downtown. But uh, I'm, I'm happy that the administration agreed to have this appraised. We got this appraisal, and it came in almost double of what we wanted to sell. Alderman Collier? I uh, understand the building is worth $440,000 to the right person. And I look at it as a future Menasha, downtown Menasha. I think that building will be sold, I hope, within a year. But I, th I think they tried to market it at a lower price to hope that somebody come in and buy up the two buildings and build something different. And you'd probably have a better tax base and a better building and something new and refreshing to go forward with downtown's plans, if we have any. Um, my idea was, yeah, you can put up for $440,000, but if it sits for two years, would you consider lowering the prices? Because I don't see it being nothing but maybe uh, an apartment building that could end up being a rough apartment building downtown, and I'm not for that. Thank you. Alderman Sevenick. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, as I, and I agree with uh, my colleague. It, yes, of course, if we have someone that comes into our community and wants to build another eight-story building, you betcha. Yeah, that's what things. that's what this body's to do. Is then we negotiate. But right now, we are listing this property, and by doing that, we need to have a set price and a fair, marketable price. And I uh, commend my colleagues that went along with having an appraisal done here. And um, if something does come, then we, we work on that and negotiate that. So, so just for comparison purposes, one of the comparables was this building that we're sitting in. This building sold for 1.1 million. I don't remember exactly when that happened, about a year ago maybe. So that was one of their comparable properties. Thank you. Now I guess I'll offer my amendment sure. that the um, we go along with Fox City's appraisal company's um, appraisal of the four hundred thirty-two thousand dollars. So there is a motion to amend to include the list price. I already forgot what you said. Four hundred thirty-two thousand. And Alderman Kruger. Okay. All seconded by Alderman Kruger. Is there discussion on just the list price at this point? Yeah, we would need that as a roll call vote, please. Seeing no further discussion, then we could have a roll call vote on just the amendment at this point, which is the listing price. Motion carried on roll call 7-1. Okay, the motion as amended at this point is to list the building with Grub Pfefferly, Newmark Grub Pfefferly through October of next year at a list price of 432000 is there any discussion? Seeing no further discussion, roll call vote, please. Oops, Alderman Kruger. Oh, I don't, yours may not have taken. There we go. Motion carried on roll call 8 0. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. The first item is ordinance 14 regarding lead water services. Is there a motion? Add everyone at once, please. <laughs> Eric, this time, I'm going to remove my name from uh, the ordinance. Okay. For introduction. 
is Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve O-14-17, an ordinance regarding lead water service, and I will add my name to that. Okay, so there is a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Sevenick with the um, with the amendment that it would be introduced by Alderman Nichols rather than Alderman Taylor. Is there discussion? Alderman Zielinski? Thank you. Um, just, to, I don't know if this would be a question for Tim or the attorney, but for an ordinance like this, for us to enforce this, is that legal for us to enforce something like this, to have them change their private section of the water service? Do we have legal standing ground at this point? Well, I heard attorney there's a, Captain? something going through the state right now that they're discussing this, the legality of it. Attorney Captain, did? Uh, in my opinion, this ordinance is legal right now if it were to be adopted. I have not heard anything going through the state right now. They're going. They're working on some programs that allow utilities to fund or be a part of a funding mm -hmm. system. But I have. Have you heard anything else, Tim? No. No. Okay. There are several cities that to this one that enforces homeowners to change their lead services. Okay, thank you. Alderman Taylor. I just wanted to make it clear that uh, in this go around with this uh, grant, uh, my street is up on uh, uh, next summer for this replacement. So I want to abstain from this uh, at this time. And that's why I removed my name too. It wasn't that I believe in this program, but uh, for transparency and everything um, in any conflicts. I'm, I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> now, about, if I remember correctly, about a year ago this came before us too, and it was it was not passed, or no one on the council actually wanted this to go through. That's why when I got back to town, I was a little bit surprised to see this um, and, and read up on it. Uh, was this pretty much initiated because of the grant money that was received by the state to help pay for these services? Uh, it was a very close vote on the last one. It was four to four. And uh, we, did, we didn't have near the funding that we had at that time, but we did receive a total of 500,000 in grant money. And we did there's a bill that passed. Uh, it was sent to the governor's desk, but I, I haven't heard. There's been no report that he signed it yet, but uh, that would allow the utilities to put up money to start like a, a loan program to continue a program throughout after the fact. So there was other things that came about that, because some of the big concerns in the first go round was the lack of funding for it. And so we made some very good improvements on that. We got $500,000 of grant money. And then our goal would be now we know in 2019 there's no grant money available. But if there is any grant money in future years, we will be going after it uh, aggressively. All right, did you, uh, does it are you anticipating that the grant money that you already have will be depleted by the end of 2019, or are you figuring it'll carry on through a couple of years during this process? Well, uh, it's actually we spent 190,000 of the 500,000 at this point, and that's going to probably be about it for this year. There might be a few more due to the weather, because once it gets cold, the contractors it gets too expensive for them to dig them up. So it. I think that it will go into 2019, but I'm not sure that it'll make it through the entire year. Okay. And and on average, the, the grant program allows for $2,500 per customer that to pay up to 95% yes. of the cost. And, and what has been the average cost of replacement right now? Uh, I, I don't actually have an average cost, but it's they've ranged from uh, 1800 to 3500 and the 3500 was a very long run. So 
and this is also available to commercial entities and stuff or is it just strictly residential it as long as it's uh if they have an apartment upstairs it has to be residential okay that's that's part of the grant requirement but if if a commercial business has an apartment upstairs that would make it eligible okay thank you thank you um the only uh, the, the big issue that i have with this uh, is you're going to have a certain amount of people within the community that's going to have their water line paid for basically 95 percent and they're going to have to pay 125 to 200 dollars and as soon as this money's out everybody else in the community is going to have to pay the full 25 up to 3500 dollars out of their pocket yeah, I don't. I just don't think that as this is written, it's actually fair with that grant being put out there. Um, so I would like to actually make an amendment to this ordinance uh, to have it sunset at the end of the funding, and that way the council can readdress it again once the funding's done and uh, deal with it at that time. So I'd like to make an amendment to the last section, section two, that reads: This ordinance shall become effective January first, two thousand eighteen. I would like it to change to say this ordinance shall become effective January 1st, 2018 and shall automatically be rescinded when the safe drinking program funds received by the Menashe utilities are depleted. It's a motion and a second. Is that a, well, I should have asked first, but I think that's a valid way to state that, correct, Attorney Captain? Yeah. When the safe drinking water funds are depleted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. She gave me your approval, so we're all good on that one. We have discussion just on the amendment at this point and I, there were a bunch of lights on before is, is yours just on the amendment Kevin I just didn't know if you had something on the amendment to oh it is on the amendment okay absolutely um, I'm going to disagree with Alderman Kruger's amendment only because the reason that my opinion the reason that the funding is only available for two years is because that's the state's budget it goes on a two-year cycle they may they may add to that after that pending on the effectiveness of the of the grant dollars and we have the ability to sunset this on ourselves if we decide that um, we're out of money and we don't want to impose this on somebody we can change the ordinance to put a sunset on it right now you could do that then if the money's run out halfway through next year we're still going to be if you if you feel like we don't want to impose this on our residents anymore then you would have to change it anyways and the fact that we used 190,000 of the 500,000 says a lot about how much of it's out there and what we need to do so I think that those dollars could continue to come from the state if this is a successful program which for all practical purposes certainly appears to be so at this point and I just soon leave it leave it as is and then change it if we need to and um, so I'll be voting against this thank you Mr. yours on the amendment already on the amendment or not no okay Alderman Sevenick on the amendment I, I yeah. agree with this amendment um, Almost what uh, Alderman Benner is saying is that uh, we don't know what future budgets are going to be, and that's why we want this in there, because it could be one way or the other. And we may not all be here two years from now or three years from now, you know. So if they don't fund it, then this, this is done with, and uh, we, we're not going to mandate uh, this because uh, that wouldn't be fair to the to average homeowner um, right now. If my street was being done, I'd jump on this. You know, it, it would it definitely would help. It's not gonna solve the problem. That's what a lot of people have to understand. It, it's not gonna solve the problem. You know, it's it's just it's gonna help the problem, basically, with lead or galvanized materials and because you still may still have lead pipes in your own home. And so whether it comes from the lateral and then comes into your home, you're still going to have lead. And that's what I was saying last time is that I decided to put in a filtration system in my home. We're getting so I wouldn't way have to deal off with that. the amendment at this point. Well, and, and that's the, the point. The funding is, 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 if it's there, it's good. When it's gone, we're done. So um, I, would, I think that it's a good amendment because I think if this amendment doesn't pass, this isn't going to pass. 
Alderman Collier. Um, Manassas got a problem with lead. We want to fix it. Right now, let's say we didn't have no grant money, but we have kids and we're always talking safety and what's best and how we want to look. If, if we didn't have this money, how would you vote? Because you're voting for your grandchildren, your grandchildren's kids, and you want them to be healthy and better and have a better chance. This is a tough one. I understand exactly where Steve's coming from, and I think that's very valid. But I also realize where the health department is in the school system and people with kids. And I sure don't want to shell 2500 bucks out. I would jump on this if I had the opportunity to. But as long as we have the money, let's run with it and then hope we get money. Because I think we got to continue this, make it mandatory. And I know there's a lot of people that can't afford it, but we'll have to find a way to do it. Because if you want to talk safety and what's best for the citizens, the children, and everybody in Menasha, you got to find a way to fix the lead problem. Thank you. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Manager Gauz. I have some concerns with the amendment that I hope you can address, uh, namely uh, in section A under the intent and purpose, it's number four and our ability to meet uh, the requirements for the lead and copper rule that are set by the DNR and I believe the federal government. So could you address those um, requirements and why it's important that this ordinance uh, move forward as written? Uh, yes. Right now we are in violation of the lead and copper rule. Uh, we did not make it in our last set of testing. Uh, so that requires us to replace 7% of our lead services per year until we get back in compliance. Uh, and the DNR has a, a, pro, or a policy now that if uh, you are not replacing the entire service, you are ineligible for any money for water mains from the state drinking water funds, which would really hamstring the water utility in maintaining its infrastructure. Uh, I mean, we have river crossings that we need to update. There, there's work we need to do, and that would really not having this ordinance, and all it would take is then one person to say, no, I'm not. I don't want to do it, and we're required to replace their part of it, that would make us ineligible for the funding. And why is it important to have that funding from the state uh, Safe Water Drinking Fund? Uh, safe Drinking Water Fund uh, interest rate is usually around one and a half or two percent, and if you qualify, sometimes it's even uh, principal forgiveness uh, so that it's, there's no other place to get money that is as economical for the water utility as from the state drinking water funds. So if I'm hearing uh, what you're saying, inserting a sunset clause on the ordinance would um, very much jeopardize our ability to meet that 7% requirement on an annual basis, and also our eligibility for affordable loans? Well, it cannot uh, affect our us doing the 7% because we are going to be required by the DNR to do the 7% per year, uh, but it will affect the affordability of future main work. And... Uh, <laughs> It, it's, it's really about the health of the children of Menasha because that's who's affected the most. Yeah, and thank you for that. Uh, I was one of the objectors to the original version of the ordinance because of the concern of running out of funds. Um, and... I was also part of a, 
a working group along with Alderman Collier um, that involved uh, folks from the National Utilities, the Health Department, the Mayor's Office about how to address these problems. And everyone felt strongly that the utility um, got a better handle on how many lead services are in the city. Yes, and right now like, the count is 456. Okay. And there were also um, a lot of discussion about <coughs> what would happen when the funds run out. Did you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yes, at this point we're looking at uh, putting together a, a loan program so that uh, now there's been some discussion for the time allotment of how long they would have to pay it back. Uh, but to from five to ten years, I think that most lean, we're leaning towards five years to pay it back. But it would be uh, at extremely low interest rates, uh, depending on the, how the uh, PSC interprets the bill, whether or not we would, would be able to use the uh, absorb the administrative costs. But otherwise, we you know we might have to charge a half a percent or a percent to pay for the utilities' own hours that they administer these loans. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure how that's going to be, because once the law goes, it'll have to go to the PSC. We'll will interpret how they're going to enforce it. So. And you feel there's sufficient time to address that while there are still grant funds yes. available. Yes. Yes to replace lead services. I feel it's really important to move forward with an ordinance that does not include a sunset clause so that we, um, as a city and a utility can, and a health department, can continue to send a clear message to our community about why it is we need to do this and the importance of getting it done. And I will not support the amendment. Oh, thank you. I, I, uh, you mentioned that there were around 456 homes that yes. are currently um, have the problem with it. Um, and at 7% a seven, a 7 that leaves around 30 homes a year that have to be done according Correct. to, to, to follow the DNR thing. Now, does the grant specify that it has to be given out in $2,500 increments, or was that something that the utilities came up with? Uh, that's something that the Utility Commission did. Uh, Without an ordinance, uh, people were not replacing there. I mean, we we did uh, Second Street this year, and there was 26 lead services on that street, I believe, and we were offering 50 percent, up to a thousand dollars to replace it, and I think there was three that replaced it, and so our fear is from the utility standpoint that. You know, we have five hundred thousand dollars and a chance to replace a bunch of lead services. So we went back and we discussed it, and that's when we increased it to ninety-five percent, up to twenty-five hundred. Uh, some of the commissioners felt very strongly that the cut, the customer or the citizen have uh, a little bit of. Uh, money in the game so that, you know, I mean, they had to at least pay the 5% so that it was a portion of it. Uh, and since that, it has taken off. I mean, well, it, well, and uh, people are, yeah. I mean, but we can, I mean, we got a hundred and, uh, excuse me, we, we've replaced 70 so far this year. So it's going to probably end up at 80. So we're moving along. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of replacements. I mean, it's it's no different than if the city gets a block grant and somebody gets, you know, a a, a donation or I mean, a grant to fix up their house, and mm -hmm. when the money's gone, the money's gone. I mean, that's the way grant money is. I mean, a lot of communities require not only the water service but the sewer line being pulled at the same time, and this would only be when we go and dig up the street and uh, replace the main. So when we replace the main, we replace our portions. That's why there were several that are, were available to 
we have is obviously didn't replace that many services or that much main this past year, but for the past 20 years, we've been replacing our portion of lead service, even though we were required to, but we did it. And so we are, we're allowing this grant to go back to anybody that we have replaced our service, where we don't have to dig up the street and, and uh, put that cost on the utilities of repairing the street and, <coughs> You know, because then it, then it just gets unaffordable for the utility to participate. And what, was there any particular reason with the 500000 why that just wasn't divided by 456 and say each resident can have X amount, whether it be $800 or whatever, and then combine that with an ordinance like this? Because that would be a lot easier pill to swallow than for, say, like uh, um, uh, Alderman Taylor is going to have his replaced and everybody on Broad's going to have theirs replaced. And if theirs average is $2,500, they're paying 5% of that, which is $125. But then when it comes to 3rd Street, there's no money left, and they're going to be having the stuff be paid the whole $2,500. And that's what I have the issue with. Well, I, I understand that, but there there were, are some uh, stipulations on the money, and part of it is that... Uh, we have we have it for three years, so we got it. We got a grant in uh, 2007, beginning of 2017, and we have three years to spend it. And then we got, and that was 300,000. And then in 2018, we receive another 200,000, and we have three years to spend that. And if we whatever we don't spend goes back to the uh, state drinking water, and we just do not have the funds in the utility to because. If we went and replaced 496 of them, I mean, the cost to the utilities would be unaffordable. I mean, I, I, I would love nothing more. I mean, uh, get, getting this uh, ordinance and getting the lead out of the water system has been my goal since I took over as water utility manager. And I've been working hard to try and get it because I think it is very important for the people in Menasha to have lead-free water. Well, and, and, and I fully agree. It's, it, it's, I'm just looking at the fairness no, as far as... I understand. So certain, and, and I will not be able to support this unless there's the uh, sunset clause, because even with the sunset clause, if the following council, when this thing does expire, wants to implement the same type of ordinance without the funding, they're more than welcome to do it. But, you know, with me sitting here... Uh, uh, Looking at this, I won't be able to support this without a sunset clause and the money for now. Thank you. The only other question I had is uh, winter's coming, and let's say somebody did not take advantage of your program last year, but all of a sudden a main broke in front of their house. Or if there's any house that you, the road you did last year, any, any house that had a broken main, you would ask to replace everything there at that time too then? If, yes. Okay. Uh, we actually have a policy we that if if there's a leak and we're gonna whether it's even on the customer side and they go in and have to replace their service, we replace our portion just because of when you go in there and and that's another part of the issue is when you go in and you disturb a lead service, the lead in that home skyrockets for a long period of time. It could be three to a year of extremely high lead going into that house after you disturb it. So, you know, and that that came out through studies they did after the uh, EPA and DNR required uh, um, utilities to replace their portion of it. And when they, that's why uh, there's the big push now is to not have any partial uh, services because it 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 skyrockets. I mean, we did we did some testing on on a home that had a leak and and it probably went up thirty times what it was before. And and so, I mean, we know that that it does that it is correct that it goes way up and and that that's so that's why we will not. You know, if there's a leak and they replace it, we replace ours because we do not want to put that kind of lead in somebody's home. So, whoops, that happened quick. Alderman thank Zelensky. You. Thank you. So, as you were mentioning before on the DNR's safe water funding or the grant, the grant funding for loans and stuff through the utility, 
So if the lead service is not replaced all the way up into the house, they will not give us funding? Even if our portion is replaced? What they restricted the funding for mm -hmm. is any future main projects. So, so it will not affect the grant money. Okay, the way no, that I understand yes, it. Yes, the, so but, but if we wanted to go borrow money to because you're doing Racine mm -hmm. Street and we got an old main in there and we don't have enough to in the operation or budget to cover replacing that main, we will borrow money from the state drinking water at one or two percent and replace that main. And we will una be unable to do that if we do any partial lead service replacements that so, we would be disqualified from receiving any funds for that do we do that often borrow from the uh, in our 10-year plan we we look to uh, borrow about three times for main projects uh, one of the big ones is we have a 16-inch uh, river crossing at the end of Appleton Street that's been in there for 80-some years, and so that's going to be, you know, $800,000 it's, itself to replace that river crossing. And then with the new bridge that's going in, it kind of goes right up through the backyards on the other side. The, so mm -hmm. it's definitely going to need to be done so in the very near future So we get because we're going to have to move it out of that bridge area as well. And they test it. So as you down. stated... The, the state is basically restricting our ability to borrow on private homeowners' yes. lead service. Yes. So <laughs> that's, I guess that's their, their decision. But um, And as far as enforcement would go with moving forward with this, it would just be put onto their tax roll, or how, how would we mandate the, the yes, skits done? Yes, if they didn't uh, pay their portion, it, it is available to go on the tax roll. Or at the sale of the house, it could be collected when the house sold, if there was outstanding balance. Okay. Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I'm looking at what the amendment is up there. Is that actually as Alderman Krieger stated it because I thought he said that it would be two years we had a two-year sunset in this state that when the grant money's already pleaded then it would end I, I don't remember you giving a date Alderman Kruger uh, no I did not give a date on it it was it rescinded it when the uh, uh, when the save drinking program funds do are depleted oh I thought I thought you said two years no no I didn't put a time limit on it okay. Yes. Well, they are grant funds, so it could be safe water drinking funds grant or something to that effect. But what do we want to call them, Tim? It's it's actually a, a state drinking water loan with principal forgiveness. So I don't know how that qualifies. I mean, it, I call it a grant because We're I it a grant, lack of. Yeah. Okay. So if the ordinance does not pass, we still have our grant program that. The utility has correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. So, just trying to be a little careful here because a little pun intended. I don't want to put the baby out with the bathwater here. You know, to throw the whole thing away just because of of a sunset on it. I think that would be that would be a good thing. Thank you. With principal forgiveness. Alderman Zelensky. Thanks. Um, so moving forward with this, and let's say this passes, the money runs out, we come to a point where there's no money available for grant funding. These, this, all this gets thrown out because of the deplete at the depleted, the sunset date. So we're moving forward, replacing these services as a community, could we still be eligible for that state safe water borrowing if we didn't replace our section, we just let the whole thing lead? Well, we would, uh, it's all gonna depend on whether or not we should say make our 
or total if there are seven. Right, if our lead, if our, if we make our lead and copper testing, we can get rid of that mandate to be to do seven percent. I mean, we're doing everything we can. I mean, we're doing a, uh, we're in, in implementing a unidirectional flushing program. Uh, we're also op trying to optimize and and do some studying on how to optimize our uh, corrosion control program better, but even and I mean we've had the program in place for several years but we were extremely close every time we took this test over the last 15 years but we've always made it up until this point then we had the one over so now now we have to test instead of 30 samples every three years we'll be testing next next year 60 samples twice a year and we have to make the 90th percentile under 15 parts per billion each time of those. And if we don't, then we will continue to have to do it twice a year until we get uh, five tests in a row that are uh, under the limit. And then, then I, that would resend the, uh, the 7%. The 7 but if that 7% is still in requirement, we would be in uh, violation and risk enforcement action from the DNR for not doing the 7 percent. Thank you. Attorney Captain? And from a risk perspective, we already know that you cannot replace only one side. So on a water main project, if people were not forced, it can't, we cannot do it because we already know what will happen, that the lead will um, increase the potential for having some catastrophe and being sued would be too high. We could provide water filters or something like that, um, but we would not be able to, regardless of the funding, right. we would not be able to only replace our part of the system and not the other half of the system, the risk would just be too great for the um, for the city. And I'm really under the impression that that's what the EPA and the and the DNR are looking to accomplish: put the cities between a rock and a hard place. That they don't have much choice to do what most a lot of cities are doing. Alderman Better. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is my third time for my life, so I kind of apologize for that. But um, if we get to a point that there is not any funding for this grant funding and we still have to replace our 7%, how does that get paid for? Well, that, that our portion comes out of the utilities uh, revenues. So we, we are required to replace it. And because it's the utilities portion that is comes right out of the ratepayers' uh, cost. But that's only the utility portion. Correct. It gets it gets a lot more complicated from the curb stop in because that's private property, and um, that's that's what's been the problem from us. We you know we we attempted several attempts to try and get a loan program originally. Uh, so that we could borrow the money to the to the residents and 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 have them, but up until this bill went through, um, this two two houses, we were not allowed as a utility to use any ratepayers' money on private property. <coughs> now that the new bill that just went through allows that to take place, but it also limits that. If uh, utility starts a program, they could pay for up to 50% of it, but no more than that. Where are we taking the water test from, the water sample? Uh, people's kitchen sink. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult uh, test for utilities because we're required to take it from the person's tap, but we have no control from the street into the house or what happens in the house, but we're required to have 
lead, the water not coming out with lead, and, and so it's, it's very difficult because we have no control over what happens to that service. That's why we're looking for this ordinance so we can, you know, get the lead out of the out of the ground and and at least you get it to the dwelling, anyways. Yes. Yeah. As I say, that'd be very difficult when you're accountable for all of that. Right. And and you're not responsible for the piping to get you there. And it, and it, so. it is extremely rare that there's lead piping inside. Now there is fixtures that have the old brass that can have up to eight percent lead in them. But now we've tested houses for years until they changed. We used to do, because it was lead and copper testing, so we did 15 copper sites with copper services and 15 lead. And we've never had any problems in any of the copper sites that could have had brass fixtures and stuff. But in the last few years, uh, they required us to put, to test all 30 sites as with lead services. So it makes it ex even more or less likely that we're going to pass it in the future. Because in the, in the past it was lead and copper, so they allowed you to take 15 and 15. Now, it's, now we'll be doing 60 houses with lead services. So again, I kind of go back to the fact we can't use ratepayer money well, on private property. And if we have if that those have to get replaced, how do they get paid for? Well, that the, the bill that just went through would allow us to use ratepayer money oh, to yeah. a portion, and that's what we're looking at uh, using to s hopefully start the loan program. And like I said, it would be you know we want depending on how the PSC uh, reg or required us if we. Could, if we could use the money to start the, the loan program and absorb the administrative costs, we could, we might even be able to do a, an interest-free loan. Now, it's, it's too early. They just passed it. Like I said, I don't even know if the governor signed it yet. I haven't seen anything come across my desk that he has, but I, I don't think he's opposed to it. So I'm assuming it's going to be signed. Uh, but, you know, some of that stuff still needs to be meted out before... You know, and, and and that so we have time with this grant money to work through the issues. Okay, thank you, Alderman Kruger. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, this by putting the sunset clause in here doesn't well, it, it kills this particular ordinance at this particular time, but it also forces the council and everybody else to come up with a solution to this to actually make it fair for all residents. And the council, I mean, at 7% at as of today with the full 456, we're talking around 30 homes a year. Every year that 30 homes are going to get done, that 7% number is going to actually drop. You know, next year it's going to be 27 homes, you know, and eventually we're going to get down to 15. And to do 30 homes, if the city actually budgeted right and 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 uh, uh, took care of stuff, they just have to set aside $75,000 to reimburse homeowners to equal the grant money that other people are going to get until another grant comes along or something. It's not like the city is helpless on this and can't come up with a solution when this th thing does sunset. There are options for the council to be able to do, uh, uh, to put it in budget and actually make this fair for the residents. I just cannot support an ordinance that's not going to be fair across the board to everybody because we do have this grant money out there. So this will also actually force the council to address this issue. If it's if this isn't in here and there's no sunset, this ordinance is just going to be forgotten about and it's just going to overlay and go right into uh, uh, charging people $2,500 for their thing and it's going to be completely forgotten about and never addressed. This sunset will also force the council, whoever's on the council, to actually address this to help this thing keep going forward and make it for, for every citizen and, and, and homeowner. And hopefully by then, maybe the state will have more grant money at that point in time. And it, it keeps everything going smooth. Thank you. Can I ask you the possibility of uh, requiring the utilities to come back to the Common Council with a proposal when the money is going to run out before the money runs out so we can come back and explain the program that we were able to put in place to hopefully replace this? And then it could be discussed at that point, and, and you know. And I think they'd want you to want to do that. 
Yeah, yeah I, I was just going to say that. I, I think that would be something. I don't think that's something that council has to vote to tell you to do it. I, I would expect the utilities to do that, knowing that this is running well, out. Well, we will. Right. I mean, and, 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 and just address this. I just, I really do believe that a sunset is, yeah, I mean, if it, it serves two things. It, it tries to make the system fair, and it also forces the city to deal with the, with the issue, no matter what, in the near future. The uh, the pardon? The city right. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, but both the utility and the city, it, it actually forces them to come up with a solution to this. Because uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's inherently unfair to allow certain people only to have to pay $125 to have their service replaced. And when this loan program is out, everybody else has to pay $2,500. So one person in one block is going to pay $125, and, and two years later, another one might have to pay uh, $200 or $2,500. Uh, so it, it, the object is to make it fair for everybody, and I think the sunset clause would force that issue. I understand where you're coming yeah, from. I yeah. disagree with it because, I mean, I, I look at it, you, you know, when you just pass the uh, paint and repair, that don't go to everybody. So is that fair that somebody whose house is worth 115000 can get free money to paint their house, but the guy that's got $130,000 can't? I mean, I, I understand your concern right. about the the homeowners, but the truth of the matter is when it comes to grants and, and everything else, it's never fair because some people get them, some people don't. I mean. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Our, our conversation has strayed from the amendment, so I hope you A little you'll... bit. It kind of strayed with yeah. the first person, I think, already, so. I think what we may be forgetting in all of this is that beyond the dollars and cents of it, we're dealing with a public health issue here. Director McKinney, could you shed some light on that aspect of this ordinance? Point of order. Yeah. What is your point of order? Well, let, let's, let's deal with this amendment, and then when we get to the issue itself, then we can address public safety and public issues. We, we allowed everyone else to go way off the amendment, so as long as it is something... Pardon? This is about a sunset clause. Let's stick with that and let's move forward. Well, I am going to say that we've already been off topic, so I would allow Alderman allow Nichols, that. if you'd like to make a I motion. I challenge the ruling. Okay. That's inappropriate. We are dealing with the amendment here, ma'am. Okay, then there's, then we'll have to take a vote on challenging my ruling to allow Alderman Nichols the same flexibility mm -hmm. that I allowed the rest of you. Could you review the um, criteria for that vote, please? And I guess attorney, it doesn't... Attorney Captain. It doesn't really matter which way we do it. Either we vote... How, how would you like to do this? I know I'm right. It doesn't matter which way, but... If they agree that we should sustain what Alderman Sevenick wants and to be very strict about it, they would vote how way? Which way? They would vote no. So if we want to be very strict about just the amendment, you would vote no. And if we would follow Robert's rules the way they're supposed and to be followed, if we would have followed, we would vote. And if you wish to sustain my ruling that others were allowed, you would vote yes. So if you want to limit discussion on just the topic of the amendment, vote no. Otherwise, vote yes. Does that make sense to everyone? And we'll need something, a roll call vote of some sort. I'm not sure. Right now, it's just the challenging of the Yeah. I'd probably not waste more time doing this than if we would have just addressed it by voting on the amendment and then addressed it as amended. <coughs> yes. Yes. So if you would we'll open this up for voting, then if you vote no, we want to limit discussion to just the amendment. If you vote yes, it would be to allow to discuss the entire 
ordinance at this point. Did you open? Yes. <clears throat> Motion fails on roll call three five. Point of order. Yes. I seem to recall Alderman Taylor stating that he was abstaining from this item way back at the beginning of the discussion. E either way, it would have no. failed. It still would have failed either way. So I, I will uphold the failure, whether Alderman Taylor's, Taylor would have or wouldn't, but Alderman Taylor should not be discussing or voting on future items if he wishes to abstain. Otherwise, you should actually vote. Alderman Sevenick, did you? You can, okay. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Alderman Sevenick, is there discussion on the amendment? I'm sorry. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Okay. And are you ready to do that then or not? Okay. This is on the amendment for the ordinance to sunset. So Alderman Taylor would be abstaining. How did we get... How did we get a 4-4 four four if... Alderman Taylor is abstaining. Yeah. Did you vote, Alderman Taylor? Okay, then you're not abstaining. Okay, so the vote is... You either have to abstain from the entire process or vote on the entire process. You can't pick and choose which ones. Okay. Okay. Amendment fails on roll call 3-4 with Alderman Taylor abstaining. So we are to the ordinance as originally um, proposed at this point. Alderman Sevenak. Uh, I'm going to be voting for this with the amendment or without the amendment. I, I just think it's a good program. I sat in the gallery last year and I watched this process. And I was amazed that the council voted against it. And all I want to say is that the people that are cheerleading today were the ones who voted against it last time. And that disappointed me. And that was the clear message that I heard. And that really bothered me. And you know what? There are a number of people on 2nd Street that didn't have this done because you didn't allow for, for them to have this access of the $300,000 that was funded. And I found that just amazing. So I'm very glad the utilities had the foresight to bring this back so we can protect our public. It's very important. Um, lead has been a major issue throughout the entire country. And that's why these types of dollars are being brought forward. I understand um, Alderman Kruger's amendment because he wants to make sure that this is equitable to everybody as far as cost. Um, I commend uh, Mr. Gauze and the Manash Utilities for pushing this forward to continue to do this to provide safe water for our community. And I would encourage my colleagues to vote for this today. Um, since you're already sitting down, Tim, I just wanted to comment that the utilities did make this grant program retroactive to everyone who had already used the program. So they are paying the same amount as anyone else. And you did get several people to replace their mains when we did increase the grant funding at that point on 2nd Street. I don't know if all of you might want to you might need to stand up, I guess. Did everyone on 2nd Street then take advantage of I'm not, not sure that everybody did, but the majority of them did come back and do it. Okay. So I mean, we did get quite a few of them. I, I don't have the exact list in front of me. I mean. And I've looked at that list so many times that the numbers kind of run together after a while. But <laughs> we did do quite a few on 2nd Street after we raised the amount. Alderman Semnick? Not all of them. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a, a question because I, I think there's a, I need to know this. 
as public officials and city employees, are we entitled to this ourselves? Because I don't think we are. I think it could be potentially be a conflict of interest. So I know Alderman Taylor has been voting because he's worried it might be a conflict of interest in his case, but I'm not sure if he's even eligible for it. So I'd ask if the city attorney may have an opinion on that. And if she doesn't, if she could find one for us. Do you want to comment? She just said she doesn't know what the grant program is. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the uh, thing. But the grant program is open to anyone. So as long as you are part of a class that anyone within the city would be eligible for, typically you would be eligible if you're not creating a special program just for yourselves. Right. And I think that's why Alderman Taylor was probably nervous. I'm just guessing this. But, um, you know, when we receive funds from and from a policy decision we just made here it could look as a conflict of interest i mean i'd certainly wouldn't mind ha having this done but my road's never going to be done so i'm never going to be eligible <laughs> anyways that's why i put the water system in that i did but um sure it, it, could we find get a ruling on that at some point mm -hmm. sure thank you thanks guys for alderman collier i'd like to let it be known that uh, over the last couple of years, we have fought diligently with the water department in regards to making more money, finding more money, making it more feasible for people to do this. And I know the grants are only here for so long. I understand where both sides are going, but now I'm at a point where I wish I could get the, the city or somebody to pay the other part, but. We're going to get X houses done. We're going to get the numbers done. We're going to work on our safety. And this will be a success, and that's why we'll have to vote it in tonight. Thank you. Alderman Taylor, are you abstaining or not abstaining? Um, here, if you're abstaining, you cannot partake in the discussion. And then I have a couple of questions for the attorney. Are you abstaining from the vote or not? It's not up to us to decide if he's abstaining, but if he's going to ask me mm -hmm. right now, I'm not going to answer him. He's if, come to me before. I if know. you are going to ask questions at this point, um, I would say that you're required to vote. So if you don't plan on voting, I'm not going to let you partake in the discussion. Okay, Mayor. Um, do you plan on voting? This is a, a mandatory. This is partaking in the discussion. Right. And this is part of the mandatory requirement of putting, to making people Are change you? their lead lines. And I'm asking, uh, does that include public officials? It does. It does. Okay. Because we just made an amendment on the, as uh, the director of, of the water plant said on the paint and restoration program and we made it that the council couldn't participate in that program. We are not talking about the program that is a utility program. I so understand that but I'm saying we it have was no brought control up here. Over that. that's, why, that's why I'm a little confused with this mayor. Point of uh, order. Yep, point of order. What is your point of order? I have two of them I guess. Alderman Nichols. Oops. Alderman Nichols, what is your point of order? Yeah. Alderman Taylor clearly stated that he was abstaining at the beginning of this discussion and there are rules regarding that. So I, is he now going to be part of the discussion or remain an abstainer? I would agree with you that if he is abstaining he needs to end discussion. Are you abstaining or not? If you will not answer, we are going to assume that you're abstaining at this point. Mayor, I'm representing the people okay, of the you district are, here. And item C1, I would like okay. clarification that. Alderman Taylor, on that. You, are, you have indicated to us you're abstaining, so we are not going to allow you to participate in the discussion anymore at this point. So is there any further discussion at this point? Yes. Alderman Zielinski? Alderman Zielinski. Yes, thank you. Um, so 
I'm just going to explain my continuing vote on this. I, I will not be voting this for, for myself because I think we're jumping in the gun on this. We don't know what our revolving loan program is going to look like. That's why uh, Alderman Kruger made the amendment to make this come back after the funds have run out. I just think we're, we always complain about jumping the gun on subjects, and this is one of them where we're jumping the gun when we don't know the future. Thank you. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. Director Gauz, uh, some clarification on a statement that was made. A grant program was available last year from the utility even though the ordinance was not in place yet. Is that correct? Correct. And for folks that may have passed up that opportunity in the past, it is still available to them? Correct, as long as our portion has been replaced. Thank you for that. Same level. Yes, it, we, it was retroactive. I mean, so anybody who replaced it when they, they got $1,000, we went back and made, and made them whole up to the uh, 2500 or whatever the 95% was. So we did, we did make it retroactive, and we, we cleared that with the DNR, and we did do that. So anybody, even before we changed the price, we went back and did that. Thank you for that clarification. And for those of us that, um, that were big dissenters in the beginning, um, we have worked diligently with the working group that I mentioned that included the uh, water utility, the health department, some of the aldermen, uh, and the mayor's office to reach what we thought was a um, a good compromise and a fair ordinance. We had some concerns that we worked through together and had a lot of questions answered before uh, this was brought before you. So uh, I really hope that the council can move forward with this tonight and send a clear message to the community that this is the, the direction we're moving in. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Alderman Taylor, are you? <laughs> Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's really not my intent to try to change anybody's mind up here. I just want to let some folks know who may be watching this. Um, Alderman Kruger brought up a point about the city taking ownership in this if we end up running out of grant dollars and that we could subsidize it. That's still something that if we feel strongly about, we can get it done as, as our role. As an elected official, we still have the ability to do that. So if they come back and tell us that funds are running low and feel we need to do something, then that's our responsibility to act on that at that point and get it put into the budget if that's something or seek additional grant dollars or whatever is available at that time. So I, I don't think it'd be worth to not approve this based on that mindset because certainly you would have time to be able to act on that if you feel the city needs more ownership in this program. Well, thank you very much. Alderman Nichols. Thank you. And I just wanted to say thank you to all the people who worked on this together. Alderman Taylor, are you planning on voting at this yeah. type? Or? Okay. Uh, I learned something here during all this discussion that it wasn't clear early on. And I learned that uh, I'll reserve my uh, not voting on something and mention it later in the conversation instead of earlier. But if let me just you, say, if you uh, item C1, notification to property owners. Property owners in the project area will be notified in writing of the capital improvement projects involving public water mains, replacement, and lead services on the utility side. The no notification shall be at least 30 days prior to the commencement of construction. You know, I think it would be really wise that we just passed a budget with uh, 2018, and I think at this point with the reconstruction streets, uh, notice should go out as soon as possible uh, that people uh, understand what this program is going to be, and it's mandatory, and there is a grant program. So uh, I can see notifying them 30 days before the construction, but I would like to see something that, unless it's in here, that we notify them ahead of time. 
This was a question that was asked and answered at the last meeting, and it had to do with the fact that notice will go out now um, when they know what the projects or when they know what the projects are. The reason for the 30 days, as I recall, um, the general manager spoke about that issue and indicated that they do not know um, all of the lead services, and if one is discovered um, at a later time, then you know obviously they can't give notice until they discover it. So if they discover it um, at the project site or something, then uh, that would be when notice is given, but they would be providing notice as soon as they know that the project is moving forward. And it was the 30 days is just in the event that because they don't know all of the um, homes that if one is later discovered, they would be giving the notice at that time. Okay, Mayor, right. that 30 days was intended to be uh, Worst case scenario because something changed. I mean our full intention is now we will be going out for bid Early next month, maybe even later this month and as soon as our bill the bids are ready and We know where we're going for sure. We will notify those people So yeah. I mean our intention is to try and give them three months. Yeah, I would like the city and of course uh, the, It sounds like the attorney said that that was discussed at the last meeting. I don't see that put in here but uh, I would like to see us, uh, Mayor, are going to notify people when we know their project is coming up for, let's say, this, this summer. Street that would project. be the utilities. Pardon me? That would be the utilities that would provide that notification. Okay. All right. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, uh, there's no doubt that uh, the health of our citizens is uh, first and foremost up here and talking with uh, uh, Director McKinney from the Health Department. Uh, in the interim, there is a solution here and the uh, Health Department has uh, water filtration kits for $15 and a replacement filter for five. So uh, people concern and they want to get out ahead of this before their services change. Uh, please stop by the City Hall here and pick up a, a water filtration kit. Thank you. Ready? Okay. Seeing no further discussion, we could have a roll call vote at this point. Motion carries on roll call 6-2. Item N is public comments on any matter listed on the agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to make a comment at this point? Uh, Tim Ghost, 98 Fox Street. Thank you for passing that ordinance, and I would personally like to apologize. I was out of line when I brought up something in the past, so I apologize for that. Sandra Dable Taylor, 545 Broad Street. Um, I didn't want to spend my five minutes on this, but I appreciate Alderman Kruger's effort to uh, create an amendment to what was just discussed regarding the lead replacement. I think the waters got really muddied on here. There was an ordinance, which is separate from the grant which is separate from the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program, which is separate from the pending on the government governor's desk, the PSC allowing another loan program. And I think everything got twisted around where people were confused on what was actually happening. Um, Anyhow, with that said, um, back to what I was talking about earlier, um, because I have to stick with the agenda. Under coming up under personnel, item D3, and just to clarify, I am not opposed 
to the mayor being authorized to give a bonus to staff members. This is basically a reflection of Act 10. What I'm concerned about with the way it's written is that it's a blank check. Um, I think if you want to go into closed session or something, uh, or whatever you did in the past, is it a percent of salary, is it a flat amount? Um, and I guess my problem with giving out bonuses is that, again, the people that are named here, you know, are well deserving of it, but there's always somebody that works their butt off but doesn't get reflected because they're not, you know, seen in the public as much. Um, the other item I wanted to bring up was under Board of Public Works, and I'm kind of confused why this is under Board of Public Works, because I would have thought this would come from the police department. Um, D3, the traffic calming policy. Um, what it basically sounds like is, rather than giving out speeding tickets, we're going to allow the Public Works Department to put up a flashing sign in the neighborhood and then assess that neighborhood the cost of the flashing sign. To me, that's ludicrous. If that's how I'm reading it. Um, it just is kind of like, the, for me, just like code enforcement or anything else, if you want to stop a bad practice, you hit them in the pocketbook and they're going to remember it. You give them a ticket and they're going to remember, I shouldn't be speeding down this street. So, um, and there was more, but it's been a long night. So, thank you. Alderman Taylor. I would like to make a motion to have a ref referendum question placed on the next Common Council agenda for December 18th, 2017. Point of order. What is your point of order? Uh, letter N, which is where we are in the agenda, is public comments on any matter listed on the agenda. I'm not sure how this request fits into either one of those categories. Alderman Taylor had requested an item be placed on the agenda. Um, as chair of the committee, I denied that item based upon the fact that it was on the agenda once, be actually twice before, in my opinion, once in this session and once in a previous session. Um, if he wishes to place that item back on the agenda, he would have the opportunity to do that by making a motion and the council would have, the rest of the body of the council would have the opportunity to override my decision at that point. So that's what he is doing at this juncture. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. Alderman Taylor? Oh, I made my motion. What was the motion? I'm sorry, I, that's, that's all fine. I s <laughs> Did he get it or no? That's fine. I would like, I'd like to make a motion to have a referendum question placed on the next Common Council agenda for the December 18th, 2017 meeting. Regarding? He asked you regarding okay. what? Did you want to say what it was regarding? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Mayor. Uh, uh, the Racine Street Bridge. Okay. So there would be no discussion on this item if the council wishes to, oh, do we have a second? Second. Some motion and a second. Uh, there would be no discussion on this item because it's not on the agenda this evening. We would just take a vote. And if this passes, the item on the agenda next council meeting would be referendum question regarding Racine Street Bridge. So at this point, we would take a roll call on that. Why don't you put it right on there? Referendum, referendum question. question. Well, it should just say referendum question 
regarding Racine Street Bridge. That's it. Does this I had two minutes left over. Okay. <laughs> Is that what you want? That's just about the play of the Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. At this point, we would take a roll call vote on that. Benner, did you? Oh, you, you're thinking. That's fine. Okay. Motion carries on roll call 5-3. Okay, it'll be up here on the next agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Next. She, no, you only get one time to speak. <laughs> yes, one time. <laughs>